What took place on Capitol Hill on January 6, 2021? What parties were responsible? What were their motives? What powerful interests desire to see a fraudulent and contested election accepted without dispute by way of a false flag that terrorizes those questioning the election into submission? Was this America's version of the Reichstag fire, paving the way for a program of accelerated socialism in the U.S.? Ten crucial questions on the Capitol Hill riot and the framing of MAGA on this special edition of MHB Report. For Memory Hole Blog Report, I'm James Tracy. The storming of Capitol Hill at the approximate time several Congress members began contesting the 2020 presidential election is itself suspicious. As news media, congressional leaders and federal authorities circulate and drive home the official narrative of the so-called Capitol Hill riot, here are some important questions worth pondering. Number 10. What happened to the typically tight and formidable security at the Capitol? Why did Capitol building police personnel charged with defending the safety and lives of America's most important public servants appear to permit purported Trump protesters access to the grounds without any fight whatsoever? This video, for example, shows Capitol Police apparently acting in collusion with those leading the so-called insurrection. Other footage exhibits numerous alleged protesters assembling before Capitol Hill Police at the building entry, as if they are a group of tourists, complete with a chaperone. Number 9. Why did House Chamber Security only barricade and defend one entrance to that specific chamber? This photo shows several other entry points that, one might assume, could be easily breached as the one given the undue attention. Some observers argue that key individuals who were also identified as potential Antifa members, or at the very least, professional agitators, were escorted to each congressional chamber for photo ops before their larger throng of protesters were allowed to enter the building. With this in mind, were police tipped off as to which portal the alleged insurrectionists would enter? Number 8. Why did the storming of Capitol Hill occur within minutes of congressmen objecting to electoral votes from states where electoral processes were under serious question? Who stands to benefit from such a disruption? Is it perhaps those interests who oppose the Trump administration and have done so for the previous four years? and who were also likely behind the most scandal-ridden national election in American history? When lawmakers returned to session later that day to address the election, it was all but rubber-stamped in the middle of the night. And the American people were once again shortchanged by never having the election proceedings seriously interrogated, much less having the results overturned. Number seven, why is it that those scaling the Capitol Hill Foundation and encouraging the throngs of people gathered outside to storm the building could be heard chanting, whose house? Our house. The refrain similar to whose streets, our streets, so frequently heard at leftist Black Lives Matter and Antifa demonstrations punctuated by rioting and vandalism. The very sentiment does not sound characteristic of Trump supporters, most all of whom are law-abiding political conservatives. 
Number six. In what ways was the Capitol building riot part of a psychological operation, and likely a long-term one, targeting members of Congress and the conservative American electorate? They were dressed as Trump supporters, but I could tell by their conversation that they were looking to do, and I heard them say, we got to shake this up so that these people look bad. And I saw them break a window on the Capitol. I'm an emergency management coordinator in uh, Lehigh County, Pennsylvania. And these people were talking amount, amongst themselves. And I was standing and listening behind them what they could do to make Trump's people look bad. The violence immediately followed Trump's lengthy recounting of 2020 election irregularities. And the event itself provided the basis for the ultimate gaslighting of Republican congresspersons and Trump supporters by their political opponents including major media. But in right-wing online circles, rumors are swirling that the destruction was caused by Antifa, far-left-leaning anti-fascist militant groups who claim to resist neo-Nazis and white supremacists at demonstrations. However, there's no evidence so far that that took place Wednesday. And Number five. Not unlike the many purported mass casualty events of the Obama administration, an event of this nature and magnitude further divides the American public between, on the one hand, those inclined to believe officially sanctioned narratives and pronouncements, and, on the other, critical thinkers who question important features of these very storylines that give them away. This dynamic creates a separate class of political heretics whose views are easily deemed thought crimes, and who may thus be targeted for suppression or eventually outright elimination. Number four. Were the same Antifa or Antifa-affiliated MAGA actors who were seen raiding Capitol Hill bust into Washington, D.C. days before the event, under police escort? One observer, in fact, captured video of what he contends is such an exercise. Sitting up on Summit, and one marked state trooper vehicle, two black SUVs, there's three state vehicles, state trooper vehicles, escorted four Antifa shuttle buses right here, front and center. There was actually five vehicles total. There was three up front, two in the back. Number three. The storming of the location where America's foremost lawmakers conduct their business is indeed a grave criminal offense. In this instance, there were several hundred such lawmakers in attendance. Why did Capitol Police officers see fit to stand down, willingly allow alleged protesters to walk freely throughout the building, and in some video footage can be seen almost collaborating with the purported MAGA enthusiasts? Number two, why are lawmakers quickly seeking to drive President Trump from office? Is it because they fear that he will invoke the Insurrection Act, thereby laying the basis for the arrest and prosecution of those involved in corrupt electoral practices, perhaps with foreign agents? Because such offenses included the interference of and collusion with foreign actors, they constitute treason for which the penalty is death. And number one, why are the U.S. Congress and military hostile toward the well-founded opinion of close to half of the U.S. electorate, epitomized in the January 6th rallies, who believe the 2020 presidential election was stolen by Joseph Biden, Kamala Harris, and their political backers? This contempt is demonstrated by the fact that within hours, Vice President Mike Pence and U.S. Army Chief of Staff Mark Milley saw fit to call out the military in order to quell the protest. In contrast, in the same Washington, D.C. and other major cities, thousands of leftist activists throughout 2020 were allowed to attack federal buildings, 
burn and loot large portions of entire cities, terrorize business owners, tear down historic monuments, attack and beat up and in some cases murder bystanders without provocation. Perhaps it could be because much of the U.S. Congress and military leadership in fact support a communist revolution in the U.S. An honest news media would publicly ponder and research such questions. Instead, like their political counterparts in Congress, these very media are going out of their way to dismiss and suppress such inquiry, suggesting the extent to which these two are working toward the same objective of a single-party, totalitarian form of governance, one that will be defined for the foreseeable future as anti-Trumpist, anti-populist, and anti-dissent, particularly if that dissent emanates from middle America. If you like what we're doing in these videos, please consider becoming a patron of MHP at Patreon slash Memory Hole. For MemoryHoleBlog.org and MHB Report, I'm James Tracy.